Hey, I'm Brian with the HVAC School Podcast. This quick video is a companion to the water source heat pump series that we did on the HVAC School Podcast. So if you listen to the HVAC School Podcast with Eric Melly, um, these were in the summer of 2018. If you're listening to this later, you can go back and find those. This is a companion to that where Eric gives us sort of a quick walkthrough of water source units, some different configurations and components, so that you get a sense of what we're talking about on the podcast in case you've never seen them before. Enjoy. I'm going to try to do a quick video on giving a tour of a cooling tower system. This one supplies water source units inside, water source package units. Here you got a cooling tower, two cell cooling tower. Basically two towers in one joined together. We're pumping our water up to the top, dropping it down. We're pulling air in through the side vents, discharging it out the top. The turn water is coming out these pipes and going over to those pumps back there. We'll get back to those later. This is our cooling tower drain, this PVC here. The bottom one's the drain, it has the valve. The top one's the overflow if the water level gets too high. It's just drained on, in this case, onto the roof. It should be going in that drain, but that's another story. Makeup water. On the other side of that in the tower is a valve with a float assembly on it, much like you see in a toilet, a big version of that to maintain the water level in the tower. They also have a bypass to fill the system faster if they were to drain it. So you can open the bypass and dump water right into the suction side. This is where our water comes up from downstairs, stepping down our pressure. It might be a backflow device too, I'm not a plumber. It's not my end of it. So this is going to the tower, feeding water to the tower. This makeup water is going to our closed loop, which we will get to in a moment. Here's just a convenience water outlet. You could put a garden hose on there if you wanted to. While I'm over here, there's our motors for our cooling tower fans. They're belt driven. Those big fan shrouds there. Pulleys on top of those motors and belts. You know the deal. Just look like a big condenser fan blade. Essentially, that's what it is. Usually you see strainers on the pumps like these have. This is our closed loop. These are our tower loop pumps. There's a strainer here for the tower loop. There's probably also a strainer in the tower before it comes out. We've got some shutoff valves here if you need to isolate a pump. You can shut this valve. And here there's a check valve and a circuit setter. So you can adjust this stem to restrict that opening, which will drop your pump amperage and lower your water flow. This is our heat exchanger walk around for a better look. These are the closed loop pumps. This is some water chemical treatment piping that is feeding chemicals into our system. So on the suction side here, there's gonna be a strainer in each one of those behind this flange here. This piping is going to a differential pressure sensor right there, which is giving a signal to a drive to decide what speed to operate this pump. There are shutoff valves at the indoor units. This is a chemical pot feeder, so you can feed the chemicals in using the pressure difference there. You can drain it at the bottom at that valve, take this cap off once you have it isolated from the system. I'm gonna try to talk real loud again. I got a slightly different arrangement to show you today. This building is condenser water and the loop is completely open. So up there, you got a tower bypass valve. Let me get closer to it. Uh, this piping is everywhere. I didn't really care about that. So there's our discharge water coming out. This is our suction side coming back to the tower. Or maybe I'm, yeah, that's the return side there. And this is our tower bypass valve, which is gonna let the water go right back to the pumps instead of through the tower. There's the inlet side of the tower and the outlet side, just like we saw in the previous video. You got your makeup water stuff. The float assembly is gonna be in there. Same thing, I'm gonna go this way back to the pump room. So that tower bypass valve is only gonna do anything when we wanna go into heating mode. So now we're gonna walk over to the pump room here. It's gonna get even louder in here. I'm gonna try to talk even louder. I guess we got no light switch. So tower fan, here's our drive. 
we're at 70% speed, 1 to 10 volt DC on this particular drive. This one's in bypass. It's supposed to have been replaced, but you know, it's the worst thing they could do in my opinion is put a bypass on a drive. Here you got motor starters for the pumps, constant volume, so they always run. Boiler, this is the circulating pump for the boiler, 80 percenter. Here we got our boiler piping. There should be a electronic mixing valve there. It looks like there was at one time, but just got a manual to try to keep our inlet temperature high enough. We've got here low water cutoff, flow switch there, uh, pressure and temperature there, on off switch. There's a thermostat back in there, and then you got your burner assembly and your gas water treatment stuff here. There's a couple of pumps, strainers in there. Look at our boiler piping, it's on the discharge side. So you got in and out, closely spaced, coming off opposite sides, which is preferred. And then our discharge water. And that's it for this one. It's all running off the uh, controller in here. Real simple Honeywell controller running all this, referencing discharge water temperature right there. And it's modulating the fans in heating mode. When the water temperature drops to a certain level, it's gonna put the tower in bypass. The fans will have shut off by that point. And if it drops lower, the boiler will come on. If we come out here back to our piping, got, you know, our risers going down through the roof, they're copper. They got a circuit setter and shut off valves and air bleeds at all the risers. Continuing on with the water source equipment itself, here's an example of one. Got our reversing valve, compressors, heat exchanger in the unit. This is actually a water source chiller. Kind of weird, but they get all kinds of stuff. So there's our chilled water piping. This is our closed loop piping. Got another Y strainer. Got our gauges. You see that one's just over 80. That one's just over 70. So like a 10 PSI difference. These are those Pete's valve fittings. Looks like we need a tiny one there. Got some thermometers. We got 90 some in and probably about the same out. It's really hard to catch on video. I think the outlet's actually broken. Chilled water piping. All the same fittings. Chilled water circ pump. It looks like we're getting our makeup water for our chilled water right here from our closed loop, which is kind of interesting. And we got a drain, no expansion tank there. So this is kind of neat. Probably another strainer there on the inlet side of this pump. Circuit setter on the outlet. Drain most likely behind there. But we got a nor normal water source air conditioner here. Not quite as fancy. Y strainer, circuit setting valve, flexible hoses. And you see we got ductwork leaving this one instead of chilled water piping. But kind of cool that we can look at two different examples. They'll even be split systems in certain instances, although I don't know that there's any here for me to show you. But I just changed the contactor on this chiller, waiting for it to come back on. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Beautiful thing. So I just wanted to do a quick example that you are good enough, or lucky enough I should say, to have a Pete's fitting. This is called a Pete's adapter. I got it off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. It has a little port. I got a pressure gauge now. This is a, not a good pressure gauge, so that's kind of a bad example. You can also stick a uh, immersion type thermometer that's the same diameter in there. There's two sizes. I think this works on the bigger ones too. I've put it in a bunch of them just to play around with it. Not super critical to have, but it is nice to have. Probably with a more accurate gauge. You can put your chemicals in and feed them through back into the system. This is your piping of your heat exchanger. The water that goes in that tower never touches the water that goes in the closed loop. This is our makeup water assembly for our closed loop. It's going into the suction side right there. We have a pressure reducing valve. We have an overpressure relief. We also have a bypass. We need to add a bunch of water. This is the air separator tank. There's an air automatic air bleed on top of it that's going into our suction side. Also, to protect the system, we have this air bladder. It's 
expansion tank. This one's actually configured to be piped in the top, but if you walk over here, it's really hard to see without climbing up on stuff. But inside that little thing here, there's a valve stem to check the pressure of the air bladder. You got an air bleed off the top of it as well at all the high points. It's a good idea to have those. I know this is not correct with this motor, but that's how it is. It still work for now, so the customer isn't doing anything about it. But that's the basic overview there. Hoping I didn't miss any components here. I'm just double checking, scanning around. You got your convenience valves for shutting stuff off. Now, hopefully, if it's your first time working on something like this, you at least know the base of components of what you're looking at. Not everything's gonna have a heat exchanger. It might just have one pump that goes to the tower and all of your working fluid is open to the tower. But that's not what we have here, so I'm not gonna get into that. Anyway, I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching.